Good evening, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Fear the Queer. A show that talks about everything on our gay agendas. I'm Kyle. And I'm Josh. And on today's episode... Yeah, what are we talking about? No, well, uh, we're just... You were supposed to do it. We'll just cut this part out. You are supposed to do it. Do what? You had the outline. No, you said... Okay, I'll pull up the outline. Um, I wrote it. Yeah. I know you wrote it, but you, you didn't listen to what you were writing, I guess. So. Okay, it says, um, the introduction should be done by... Kyle? No, it says the introduction should be... I'm just kidding! We're all, we're just kidding. We're, we're just acting. We're terrible. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like terrible. acting. <laughs> we're acting. Jumps up from the plane. We're act, today we're acting. And the girl's like, <laughs> crying on the floor. Yes. We are totally kidding. Yes. Uh, we know exactly what's going on because we are on top of things. Well, at least Josh is on top of things and I'm just along for the ride. It's the first but, time I've ever been on top of something. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, you made a top and bottom joke. I didn't this time. Yeah, 2020. So, so I appreciate it. We are actually going to be doing a very special episode today on Fear the Queer. So, yes. yeah, Kyle, let's go into a little bit of a backstory explaining of why this is such a special episode for us. So, months ago, we were living our best lives and recording podcasts, and we had good friend of the pod, Jill Conkle, on. Uh, from J- JMK Skincare. Yes, granted, and we're still like very much in the middle of the pandemic. So we were still just like recording from home. No big deal. You know, just wanting yeah. summer to happen. Yeah. And summer to happen. And we were really looking forward to Pride. And we were talking about the Pride parties we've been to and discussing it with Jill because Jill always throws a fabulous party. Mm-hmm. And we recorded that on uh, May 24th. And we were kind of like glib about it and just were very excited. And the next day was when George Floyd was murdered. Yes. And uh, us as a podcast, we discussed and we just didn't think it was appropriate to be releasing a podcast. One, about why we missed pride parties. Right. And two, when there was like so many other more important things like Black Lives Matter and protesting and trying to hold the police accountable, which who knows if that will ever happen. Um, So we focused on that, but we still had this podcast recorded. Yeah. And we were going to, we kind of thought that like, which is maybe like boo boo the fool of me to think this, but we're just like, oh, you know, this is more important right now. Black Lives Matter protests, uh, the Mm -hmm. trying to find justice for George Floyd maybe we can release this sometime later in the summer. But then, later in the summer, police were still acting, uh, terrorizing citizens, uh, you know, murdering Black people. And so we're just like, we don't know when we're going to ever release this because we feel like this is not, it's, the world was so insane. We're just like, we have so many more important things to focus on right now than a private right. party. Yeah. So, right. Now that and I mean, in- we still have more important things to focus on than a pride party, but we also cannot take away from the fact that we can demand justice while also celebrating our identities. Yeah. I was but, say- but at the time, it just was not appropriate. Right. It was a little bit more sensitive at the time. But now that we feel like as queer artists, we need to continue to push forward and still create an, uh, art, basically, during these really tough times, we feel like it is a great time, finally, in October, to release this very special lost episode of Fear the Queen. Yes. Yes. We, we've talked about the lost episode in a couple of previous. Uh, we never thought that we were going to release it, but now seems like a good time. We're, we're getting into spooky season. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a spooky twilight, like uh, what if you know, yeah, coronavirus was happening and we were all quarantined, but it, I feel like even since then, so every, every month, every week, so much changes, um, you know, so welcome to the lost episode. Yes. And I was going to say, 
um just keep in mind that one we weren't recording videos at the time so it'll still be mm -hmm. very much in a podcast format and two i think this is just going to be like a weird time capsule just from even from the end of may till now in october of just how much the world has continued to change <laughs> yes um, yes yeah so sit back sip on your thirst trap and relax as Kyle and i present to you the last episode of fear the queer good evening listeners and thank you for tuning in to another episode of fear, the, fear queer. the queer a podcast that talks about everything on our gay agendas i'm kyle and i'm josh and on today's episode which is our 50th episode Woo! 50 just like woo, kyle's woo, woo. age I don't look a day over 52. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be talking about the Pride Parade turning 50 this year. Although yeah. we are in the middle of a pandemic. So that parade is probably not happening. Right. But we'll get into that more. Uh, yeah. With us today, again, is our unofficial co-host, Jill Cockle. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Jill. How are Hello, you? Guys. Hi. Um, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I am always so appreciative of any Fear the Queer invite, especially when it comes to an anniversary. So I really do appreciate that. And, and we thank you because, honestly, since you've been on, our numbers have doubled. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone from one to two. <laughs> Oh, that is that is doubling so you know it doesn't matter I think if that is amazing and thank you everyone for listening and um Kyle when you said it's turning 50 this year but it may not happen this year I was thinking does that mean that we all get to shave an age off or a year off our age Ooh, I kind of like that if we can shave a year off the age, I also want to shave down my jawline. I'm just saying. <laughs> I would Sh like to shave down my eyebrows a little bit. I would like you to do that, too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We you all would nice like you to do that. No, no. This is your intervention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grab the um, Norelco. No, I'm just kidding. You have nice eyebrows, Josh. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Joan Crawford, be jealous. All right, so before we get into anything further, ladies, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, tonight, I am having refreshing sparkling water. Ooh. It's, it's not LaCroix, because she's poor. But it is from the <laughs> dollar store, and I already opened it. So I kind of fucked up the sound effects, but I will be crisp and replenished. Just a little bit more of, like, gay ASMR. Just bubbles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bubbles. Poppin' I, bubbles. <laughs> I realize I'm actually, I don't even have a drink next to me. I got everything all set up, and I was like, I don't even have anything to drink tonight. So I am currently SOL. Well, you're already the tall glass of water, so there you go. Oh, thank you. I'm so nice. Quarantine has made yeah. me nice. I, I was like, who I, is I, this? Okay, this is suspicious. I gotta, I gotta fight someone soon. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose my street cred. All right. <laughs> Joe, what are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> I just love how Joe's just like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I am enjoying some water and a stevia blend tonight from Bloom Farms. Oh. That's Bloom Farms. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, then I guess, uh, cheers, queers. Cheers, queers. Cheers, queers. Clink, clink. Clink, clink, clink. Well, that leads us into our new segment. It's brand new. It's the soft and supple skincare routine sponsored by JMK Skincare. Take it away, Jill. Woo! Yay, thank you so much for the inaugural soft and supple segment. I'm very excited. <laughs> I, I really am. And... I thought that since it's, you know, the 50th anniversary of the Pride Parade and it's the theme of the episode, I wanted to kind of give skincare tips for when you go to the Pride Parade. Oh, okay. You know, skincare, it's something that's 
really you should think about every day. It's a lifestyle. And I thought kind of, especially pride is my favorite holiday and really <laughs> my, my Christmas. So I think it's nice to be soft and supple and ready. And here are some tips to let you do so. So number one, uh, the pride parade is in the summer, obviously here in Chicago, it's in June and it's in different par uh, parts of the year in different parts of the world because summers are different, but it's always in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that it's important that you protect your skin because you don't want to go to pride one year looking great. And then you get sunburn all day because it's so hot. Sun is beating down on you because it's the end of June and you don't want to look great one year and then come back looking like a California raisin the next. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kyle is listening, Joe. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm taking it in and I'm going to take down these tips. I'm writing it down right now. You know what? Are you taking note? Uh, I, you hear like the keyboard clacking. <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> and so... Um, you want to make sure that you wear sunscreen. You want to make sure that preferably, you know, an SPF 50, a, a waterproof formula is also great. I like the Super Goop Play Lotion because it lasts about 90 minutes waterproof. So if you're sweating, you're at the parade, you're not going to have to reapply all the time. And it's an SPF 50. It's a mineral um, sunscreen. So those are the best for your skin. That's what I recommend, but get something with the highest SPF you can find that's waterproof. That's very important for pride. That's my number one skincare tip ever, but especially when you're going to be out in the sun. The next one also is to hydrate, drink a lot of water before, during, after your skin's going to look great. And also you're going to keep yourself from passing out. Cause that shit ain't cute. Yeah, no. no, especially not at the parade. Exactly. And, you know, that's that's just not great. So drink a ton of water. Also, if your skin gets oily, maybe think about that morning uh, moisturizing your face with a mattifying moisturizer. I like the one from Glow Recipe, but there's a few others. Just, just research what's good for your skin. That's one that I recommend. And that'll keep your face hydrated but also looking matte and not as oily because I tend to get oilier during the summer so make sure that also if your skin gets acts a little up it's sweating you know it's oily maybe have a nice nourishing mist that could balance the pH and also um, just kind of hydrate your skin and settle it down Mario Badescu makes a great one also, yes. um, Glow Recipe also makes a great one. And there's a Glow Recipe dupe at Trader Joe's right now. It's watermelon. So that those have been great that I've been using and I, I've always used. Um, and also for body skin care, speaking of Mario Badescu, the AHA grapefruit body wash, that will make your skin so amazing. So if you're wearing, if you're at Pride and you're not wearing a lot, you don't want, you know, your bumps and everything. I, I've, I get my, my hair follicles get clogged sometimes with the um, keratosis pilaris. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you're washing with that, your skin is going to look soft and supple. And just like number one, just have fun and you're going to look cute no matter what, but just make sure you're wearing that sunscreen. If you take anything from this, get your pen and <laughs> just make sure you're wearing sunscreen. <laughs> like I'm just imagining you like typing up this like list and you just present it and all it says is sunscreen. <laughs> At the very end, it just says sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> sunscreen yes so if that's if that's one thing you take from this that is that so um i don't know if you have any questions but those are my top pride skincare tips no because i i yeah thank you for reminding me because i remember i think it was like last year or something like that where someone did a, my eye makeup and the next day for whatever reason the sun like tanned everything around it but that little eyepiece and then it like weirdly got really dry after that yeah that's yeah definitely because your skin was was damaged by the sun because that's the thing tanning I mean that's that's just dead skin cells that are dark I know 
like curse the early 2000s for making us believe that tanning was really fucking hot <laughs> i know but the thing is if you do want to look tan go do a self tanner yeah uh, self tanner love and tan makes a great one develops overnight i'm a big big fan of it also um saint tropez has a lot of great formulas not very saint tropez jiggly caliente that i l- immediately was thinking that <laughs> <laughs> so those are two great um kind of faux glow hacks okay well thank you i think these skin honestly this me i'm a california raisin but with these skincare tips i'm about <laughs> to look great you're about to look great <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> And we're going to end this phone call with Kyle right now. (laughs) You're like, log off old. (laughs) Yes, but thank you for letting me do that. Um, Check out JMK Skincare for more tips. Yes, um, and that is JMK Skincare. And now to get into the heart of our gay agenda, we are celebrating 50 years of pride. Woo! Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Woo! <laughs> so just to clear some confusion, last year we celebrated 50 years of the Stonewall riots. Um, and now we're actually celebrating 50 years of the pride parade itself. But like we said, unfortunately, because the world has ended, the 50th anniversary is now kind of canceled. Um, which kind of sucks. We will get into it in just a second. That being said, if you guys wanted to listen to our Stonewall Pride series, check out episodes 18 through 21 on SoundCloud, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, so right now in Chicago, I think Lightfoot has, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, um, she has delayed the parade until she she wants to do it like at the end of the summer or something like that and during the month of june for pride month she's doing or other bars and things like that are doing like um virtual celebrations it sounds Mm -hmm. like yeah um i think la is doing the same thing if i'm yeah it's that that's kind of what i've been seeing a lot of uh just cities or bars or organizations posting about is okay well we have to cancel the parade, but we're going to do, like, digital stuff, whatever that might be. Right. Um, well, it's funny, because I even see, like, bars themselves, like, doing their own little uh, pride thing, because uh, Sasha Bell posted that she's going to be on Splash Chicago's pride celebration. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's her oh, and, yeah, it's her and Ariel Versace, apparently. Oh, which, oh okay. Yeah, which I'm just like, those are so- I don't know why, but that's such a random pairing to me. <laughs> it's also, well, that's, uh, it's also huh. Splash, though. So I doubt Splash has that big of a budget to get talent. That's true, because they're a new bar, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they used to be a bar called Meat, spelled M-E-A-T. If you guys didn't know already, Jill owns Boys Town. Yeah. So she-, <laughs> <laughs> she owns 51% of Boys Town. <laughs> she um, has- Seen some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, literally, there are some pride parades where yeah, some stuff people happens. can't hold themselves. Um, I know. Um, <laughs> um, also, I forgot <laughs> to mention about that. <laughs> yeah, I cut that. <laughs> Just joke. Um, also, I forgot to mention in New York, um, they're actually broadcasting it on ABC, I think. Um, they're on June 28th. They're gonna have Dan Levy. The Alley Forney Center, Yanzi Peng, and Victoria Cruz Grand Marshal, this like digital oh. parade in a way. Um, and I guess Janelle Monet and like Billy Porter and all of them are still actually going to perform virtually. So it's kind of like one of those like ABC at home specials. But well, that's nice. I mean, like, <clears throat> why not? At this point, yeah. I feel like people, um, it is more acceptable for parade, like the Pride Parade. Mm hmm. It, you know, as a, like inclusive, you know, you see like, you know, the Thanksgiving Day Parade and the St. Patrick's Day Parade and all these other things. Uh, Pride has kind of become that, you know, where it's just like, all right, everyone come together. Let's celebrate, mm-hmm. you know, throw on a rainbow. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, especially like in the big cities like L.A. and New York and all that. Um, 
my question for you guys though is that um i think kyle you brought it up about like how corporations are just gonna like skip over pride this year because they don't give a fuck (laughs) Um, yeah (laughs) do you i mean i haven't really been out much lately obviously but i did see that skittles changed their brand um they, i did too yeah yeah and i did see <laughs> it's funny because like we went to target the other day and i saw like just briefly passing there's like this very small section of just like rainbow stuff in the corner right yeah. now <laughs> yeah i'm just like is that them preparing or is that all this year <laughs> <laughs> here you go here you go guys right. um <laughs> i haven't I, been to target that's usually where i go to get kind of my little knickknacks every year that have rainbows on them i haven't been there in about a week or so so i that's actually a really good point i never even thought about that that the corporations might skip over it i hope not but that i mean well it's all it's gotten so corporate it's like when people complain about christmas like yeah (laughs) I keep the gay in pride. <laughs> right. I know. Even I'm like, I remember last year, like we saw like so many random things that were just pride related. Like oh, I was just Listerine. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what? Washes the, washes the cum flavor out of your mouth. <laughs> wow. Don't have to worry about wow. that. Wow. Do you say you don't have to worry about that? Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> So I don't know, like, do you, uh, do you prefer a balance? Like, do you prefer, like, some corporations still do it or all in? Or I don't know. I guess because I, I guess I'm, hit, like, um, contradicting myself because, like, last year I was complaining about it. And now I'm just like, I hope they still do it. Personally, when I'm having a party, those those rainbow, I mean, oh, especially over the past maybe two years, the, um, no, maybe three years, whatever, it's irrelevant. But um it's it, it, there's it, corporations have latched on so much that when I am having a party it makes it easier to find decorations at Target and you don't really have to look very far and you can kind of do all these fun kitschy things at your party because all these corporations are putting rainbows on stuff but mm-hmm. then when you're not having it it is kind of like damn they just bandwagoned the hell out of this right yeah, like you actually, like like, like I'm with like a little wagon, like that's pride related. <laughs> you're like <laughs> your your little uh, rainbow wagon. Um, I I think what's interesting too is usually corporations will contact Jill and ask if they can sponsor her pride parties. <laughs> so have you been? We were sponsored by Goose Island the first year. Goose Island, yeah, that's and true. last year, um. It was sponsored by had a lot of botanicals. So I, we were sponsored. It, it is, it, it is an interesting kind of like, you know, you don't want corporations to kind of capitalize on people's identity. I mm-hmm. think that's, I think that's kind of it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it is. I mean, how can I bitch and moan about? corporations being like hey we support you you know it it is a weird like I I don't know I have mixed feelings about it um I feel better when corporations like I know Skittles was like oh look we took the rainbow out of the Skittles to Mm -hmm. represent that like the rainbow is for pride and you know the Skittles blah 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 we're bringing awareness to LGBTQ people and I believe and I, I could be wrong uh don't cancel me, listeners. But I believe that Skittles is <laughs> Skittles is donating twenty five thousand dollars to the Trevor Project. Oh, nice. so yeah. So I I always like if you're gonna be corporate about things, at least give some money to LGBTQ groups. You know, it it feels weird when it's like, oh, here's a mouthwash. Oh, what what percentage of your sales during Pride Month are you going to give to an LGBTQ group? Nothing. Wash your mouth out, homo. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, shut up, you know, homo. Drink some listerine. <laughs> yeah, shut up, homo. Your breath know, smells it's... like balls. <laughs> <laughs> or ball. Right, or ball. If it's Jill's case. <laughs> or ball. Hey. Um, you know what I was gonna say is like I wonder if like corporations are listening to. Uh, the queer groups who are like saying like oh my god you guys are capitalizing on this and now they're going to at least like 
meet us halfway hopefully because that's what I all that's all I care about really um I think no I think we're gonna see even a bigger trend that more brands are just gonna keep going at it just because I I I really don't see it slowing down we have um we're doing at Conagra and and maybe honestly low-key I'm thinking about this maybe they heard me a couple episodes ago um <laughs> Duncan Hines is doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, it's just like um, maybe maybe so, they heard me. If not, let me say it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, Duncan Hines is doing a um, cake decorating contest of making a Duncan Hines cake and then decorating it pride themed and they're having a contest and the winner gets to go on all of Duncan Hines social media which they do not put that much effort into the Duncan Hines social media it's definitely Slim Jim at Conagra but um that they I mean the Slim Jim Instagram's like massive now but um you get to be on the Duncan Hines uh um, social media and my director is entering because my director is really talented with decorating cookies and cakes and she wants me to come up with an idea. So, Ooh. you know, and I have to think of something and, but the, uh, yeah. So even Duncan Hines is, is playing in. Hey, There's- and that's no cakewalk. <laughs> <laughs> How much did it hurt? Like for you just like holding in that joke until I, Pause. Um, like for at least a minute and a half, I was like biting my t- my lips. I was like, "Don't say it, don't say it. Wait till she pauses. Okay, she's gonna keep talking. She's still talking. Wait till she's. It ain't no cake walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's just the frosting on top. I was gonna say, and once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna say goodbye to Kyle Bachman tonight. <laughs> I've been canceled. <laughs> We're going to be putting Kyle asleep permanently. (laughs) (laughs) You just mute button me. I keep talking. (laughs) You know, I'm hoping, I hope Duncan, honestly, I hope Duncan Hines is listening and they're like, you know what? That bitch, he's kind of punny. I want him to work for us. (laughs) Okay. So anyway, um, so speaking of pride and your pride party, Jill, I, I actually, I never thought of this until now. My entire Pride celebrations have always been based off of your Pride parties because I didn't celebrate Pride until 2017. You're so homophobic. I know. I fucking hated the gays up until then. (laughs) Okay, I still still do. (laughs) (laughs) No, so it's just like, it's funny because like, I guess your Pride parties, they mean so much to me. I just wanted to let you know that. That is means so much to me I uh, it's been I remember when I was when my first pride party yeah that was 2017 and I was like it'll just be the it'll just be the pit stop between the bars and then it just turned into the entire day Mm -hmm. and I wait I can make this something and and here we are it would have been the fourth fourth annual but we'll get there yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, we'll still have some sort of like, yeah, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, but even right. if like, even if it's in November and it's like Thanksgiving, I'll be like, Jill, I'm coming over. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I would, and I would do, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, knowing that, do we want to talk about kind of like some of our favorite prides throughout the years or pride moments throughout the years? Yeah, when did you guys like? When did you guys start celebrating Pride? I mean, Jill, I know like since like you are a fetus, but yeah. like. Like in the room. Uh, no, my first Pride Parade, I was 15, and I went with. And you know what? I'm not giving the year of that because I don't want these shady ass bitches doing the math. <laughs> it's okay. We're gay. We can't do math. <laughs> that would have been 2007. Okay. Or 2007 or 2006. So like um, two years ago. Right. Exactly. Um. That was. I was was 15 I went with my aunt my uncle and my sister and just pride was a lot different back then um there was it it was gosh probably a quarter of the people who come now um and 
there were no barricades. You would literally just stand straight on Halstead and they could throw anything from the floats. It, you would leave with so much stuff because they would just throw like streams and streams of condoms and a lube. They would like chuck it at you. They would like do <laughs> <laughs> like imagine it in, like 32 ounce bottles of lube, like just like chucking them at people. It was little like, like, sachets of it you know and um but <laughs> here's a two liter of ky <laughs> <laughs> no it was always like like an off-brand flavored lube or they would they it was like just bird. Like, it was i remember it, it was like cherry they would just throw like they would throw stuff all the time and you could be in you basically stood in the street there like i said there were no barricades at all and it was just it was really fun um do I miss, I mean, I still love pride. Do I, do I miss how it was back then? Yes. Um, absolutely. It was, it was a lot, just people were just crazier. You could literally, I remember thinking pride was like the only time of the year where just nobody cared because mm -hmm. like before Rom got, was mayor, Rahm Emanuel, you could drink on the streets. You could literally do whatever you wanted. Um, so I don't know why I went on this tangent, but that was the, that's <laughs> the story of my first pride. I was 15 um, and it was it was very fun. And then I've been going ever since. I was going to say, have you gone every year since then? Um, no, I definitely I had uh, I missed a year or two because I had to work um, those days. And it was like prime college days where really I was not in the position to say no to any money and of course had no paid time off back then so yeah. if I was scheduled on that day I I was working that day so I, I missed a couple years gotcha okay well I mean still I mean you've been celebrating way longer than I have so <laughs> <laughs> I think um my first year was I was 21 and two months later I turned 22 and it was the day after my friend Julie's 22nd birthday so I was super hungover mm -hmm. and I think I've told this on the podcast before but regardless uh myself my friend Brandon and uh my friend Alyssa we all went to the parade and we stood outside of the Whole Foods in Boys Town and uh Alyssa left us <laughs> <laughs> to go, <laughs> she like bye. left us. She she was well. She saw someone that she like had a crush on. So she's like, okay, bye. And Aww. Brandon and I like stood there, totally hungover, no sunscreen. We did not listen to Jill. <laughs> and didn't have the uh, Instagram at the time. Uh huh. Didn't have the Instagram at the time. Nope, nope. I um I actually did not have an or maybe I did have an Instagram. I don't remember. Um. And it was so warm. And these two lesbians that were like a little bit older, they were there with their son and they gave a shade under their umbrella. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. And then I went home and I had like heat stroke. Uh, so, you didn't uh, hydrate. No, I didn't. I was dumb and 21. But uh, yeah, that was like my first pride parade. And then I was like, I don't know. I was going through some things. I do think the parade and just pride festivities have changed a lot over the past few years um uh -huh. because like in 2012 it was like it was really overwhelming and I mean also I've changed a lot so like maybe if you know 29 year old Kyle would have been there in 2012 I probably wouldn't have thought anything of it but mm -hmm. like being kind of like a baby gay and being there and being it, it felt really overwhelming yeah. uh but then, like, over the years, like, I missed quite a few Pride parades just because I was like, meh, I, like, I didn't care or I was busy um, moving usually because our lease, when I lived with uh, Brandon, we, our lease would be up at the end of June. Mm -hmm. So we would always be moving on the Pride parade. Um, so we never, like, would go to the parade. We'd always, like, kind of get the aftermath uh, and go to like a bar or hang out with like friends on the rooftop mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, I remember one year, I, have, I don't know if I've told the story, but I remember one year I was, I could not get to my friend's house. He lived on Belmont 
at just east of Halstead. So it was, like, impossible to get to his apartment. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I really... But, you know, all my friends were there. And I was like, okay, how am I going to get there? And as I was trying to maneuver around the parade route, I see this van pull up. And these, like, older lesbians get out. And they have, like, these, like, medieval cloaks on. Oh, God. <laughs> and they're there with, like, their kids. And the kids are also dressed like wizards or something. And they're holding rabbits and the rabbits have little fairy wings on them did you walk in on like a pagan sacrifice <laughs> well i <laughs> and they were and I, and I was you. like i was like no thank you um it was uh you know i i hopped to it i really had to uh <laughs> i had to get out of there um it just weird just weirdness but i feel <laughs> like <laughs> What? Just, uh, just weird. <laughs> it's so just weird. Weird. Oh, the gays. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I think that what changed the most was the 2016 election. I think changed the climate and how the parade represented itself. Uh huh. Um, it felt a lot more, you know, like everyone coming together to just like more so protest against hate and combat mm-hmm. that hate with love and acceptance mm-hmm. um, and inclus- inclusion. Uh, and then, like, you know, I feel like last year is a nice medium of that kind of protest against hate along with go-go dancers. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, every other one is a go-go dancer. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, because I remember 2017, like I said, was my first Pride with you guys. And I remember there was, like, there were so many people like support uh, like I don't know Lori Lightfoot or something like that that kept walking through and then I remember crying at the uh the churches that walked through that were supporting LGBTQ rights um Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it's funny looking back at it now because it's like you could totally tell it's like baby's first pride because like I was sobbing at it and I was wearing like a Target black t-shirt that said like happy pride on it <laughs> and, like i was like holding a rainbow flag like just very much like generic like pride outfit stuff Josh, and- <laughs> we were standing there at your first pride and that one guy um like he was he was asian and he was really cute and he like spotted you and then like ran over to you and put something into your hand and we were like what is it and you oh because we thought like he was really into you and you opened it and it was a fortune cookie oh my god, <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> like, oh. i forgot about that <laughs> That's what Josh means every time he says representation matters. Exactly. I just want to be given a fortune cookie by my queer. <laughs> like, what? Yes. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about that until now. I, I don't know why, but, like, the only thing that really, really stood out for me that year of Pride was um, uh, a person who we no longer associate ourselves with being there. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Like, I, I don't know. I don't wish any ill will against said person. I just think it's, like, so funny. I was like, just let it go, Kyle. We're just going to wink. It's not like he's listening. Yeah. Oh, my I, God. I Well, I would hope my frenemies support me. Oh, my God. I mean, maybe. Is, is he on your radio? <laughs> Damn, that was a good one. I think if. I think he could, he just got back from London. <laughs> of course he did. But I don't know if you guys remember. I can't remember who was standing next to me. But, like, I was um, changing into my pride outfit at our friend Sean's place. Well, I just remember um, our acquaintance was just, like, drooling. And I was just like, oh, my God, why is he staring? And he weirdly, like, was being sexually aggressive. Do you remember this? Yeah, I didn't understand. I don't know, because, like... <laughs> Like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> like, I always say. Was, was very aggressive and yeah. definitely liked to make the rounds. Oh, yeah. I was just like, I know I was like one of many people he had hit on that day. And I just yeah. think it's funny because Only like. Eyes for you in that moment. <laughs> well, I just think it's funny because it's like we there are like 
certain groups of friends where they like all sleep together and like you know pass each other back and forth which is totally fine and but- yes we are one of those groups <laughs> I I believe this person thought we were one of those groups and we aren't one of those groups. So it's like, we are definitely not one of those types of friends. Right. Speak for yourself. No. (laughs) You and Jill are actually like canoodling on the couch right now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Jill was the one who turned on Beyonce. Yeah. We're actually broadcasting live from from the boudoir. (laughs) From the boudoir. Don't worry, we're wearing face masks. And, yeah. and nothing else. Um, <laughs> okay, so now, I, do you guys remember when last year we were given weed brownies? Or was it weed gummies? Uh, that was two years ago. Yeah, that was two years ago. Oh, that was two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, time is flying. Um, I just remember very little of that year because of those gummies. <laughs> yeah, that year. I mean, I remember, like, I remember telling a lot of stories but what's new I was like oh listen to this funny story and listen to this thing funny story was, the thing cool. was Kyle and I usually are kind of the entertainment of any party because I feel like as Leo's we just we feel that pressure of like it is our job like you need to carry things so usually yeah we'll, you got to keep up the energy right and but yeah. I was just like we'll feed off of each other. Like you'll tell a story, I'll tell a story and everything. Mm -hmm. But I had taken a weed gummy and it had felt like literally my mouth had been sewn shut. And all I remember is being on the couch, zoning out with Josh while Kyle is standing, you know, just projecting this story. And then he turns to me and he goes, tell your story now, Jill. And I look and I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Like, uh, I told you, I'll pay you a million dollars if you tell me anything of what Kyle was talking about. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> and honestly, it could have been anything, because you know me. I'll get to talking, and I'll talk about anything for ever, even if I'm by myself, which she at was. that point, I basically was. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you kind of were in a way. <laughs> yeah, I was like basically by myself. Um, I'm I remember very grateful for you for carrying my party while I was incapacitated. That is a, <laughs> that is a party tip. Do if you're going to <laughs> take part in substances, make sure you know exactly what it is mm-hmm. and the amount. That's, yeah, and make sure you're with good people. I think that's uh well, especially that's, that's good. Host, especially if you're the host of the party, it's your job to host, not get <laughs> high <laughs> or well, that. You were using some of that PTO you talked about. Um, (laughs) I actually was. I I remember the year that Josh and I were lip syncing and I uh, hit a, hit a short, I hit the circuit. And um, because, because the day before I had gotten home or maybe a, a, a couple days before, but I was in a drunken stupor and I was making a Jack's pizza, my favorite frozen pizza ever. And my old unit, you really could not run the oven at all or the fire or the smoke detector would go off. Mm-hmm. So it was in my wall and I was making a Jack's pizza and, for, and it was like maybe 4 a.m. And I was <laughs> annihilated and the smoke detector starts going off. And I just remember thinking like, rip that thing out of the wall. <laughs> I just ripped it out and I threw it in my freezer. And the next morning I wake up and there's wires hanging from the wall and the smoke detector is like 32 degrees. <laughs> and and you thought to yourself, I can still throw a pride party. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. The show must go on. And, and you it know did. I was going to say, you know what the great thing about that is, too, is that, like, hearing you, like, being drunk off your ass at 4 a.m. with a Jack's pizza, like, burning in your oven. Like, I'm just like, God, I really miss those days. Same. And the thing is, remember, I really, really like my Jack's pizza well done. And when we used to make it at Landmark, I'd be like, hey, Josh, can you grab me my pizza out of the oven once it's done? And Josh used to come out, and I was like, that cheese is still white. That is (laughs) Done. Put it back. <laughs> yeah, Joe liked, liked your cheese pizza like brown. <laughs> yeah, that pizza uh, got too much sun. 
Yeah. She it needs more S- less SPF. Yes, the the show must go on. Even last year, um, you know, my ceiling had caved in like two days before, and we still had the party. <laughs> I was like, to be fair, I do not remember that at all. See, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, you put up, you had like each flag that represented different parts of the LGBTQ plus yeah. community and mm-hmm. a clear tarp. Right. Uh, to clear. where your ceiling caved in. So it was like every every one was represented. I like, I like to in I like to encourage transparency. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I <laughs> That's why the clear tarp was on. <laughs> You're like, I want to represent everyone. We have gay, straight, or, bi, lesbian, transgender, transparency. <laughs> Did you just slip in straight people, Kyle? <laughs> you know what? I did. And you know what? I think I'm softening. I think I'm like, hey, allies. Hey, Taylor Welcome Swift. to Pride. Hey, ta- you know what? I really have. This past year, I think I'm getting softer. I think I'm I'm not as mean as I've been. Um, I um, would <laughs> You would say that or you would disagree with that? <laughs> I said I would agree with that. Oh, okay. I thought, Jill, you're like, um, I would disagree with that. Imagine, uh, imagine if I said it like that, too. Like, um, I would disagree with that. And that's just my own, off. like, it, that's like me and my inner saboteur. That's me by myself saying, like, I think I've been nicer this year. You know, I'm trying to be nicer or just, like, calmer. And my inner saboteur is like, mm, I would disagree with that. <laughs> Jill is my inner saboteur. No. I... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not. Hey, she defended you on your birthday against yeah. those people. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That was market days. That was market days. Uh, which for me, I know this sounds weird, but because Pride is in June and market days is in August, it just feels like a very long gay summer to me, which I am not complaining about oh, whatsoever. Man. That's the way to do it, though. Well, Pride is 165, I mean, three. <laughs> 160. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't do math. Um, it's it's uh, really 360, math. 365 days a year. I don't know. <laughs> My God. She's feeling herself. I literally, I'm not drinking. I don't have an alcohol. It's sparkling. It's not alcoholic. I don't know why. Oh my god, the heat's Spark getting off. to me. Clearly, I was like, it's been hot one day, and Kyle's already like malfunctioning. <laughs> I told you my like <laughs> European peasant body is just like uh, not made for the weather. Same. Hot weather. I am kind of bummed because every year for Pride, I like to make a different T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, like, last year I had a shirt that said Sissy on it. Um, The year before I had a picture of Dolly Parton on it. The year before that I had a Cupid doll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, each year I try to do a different t-shirt. And this year, um, should I still make a t-shirt anyways and post it? Oh, I think so. I think so, too. Still do, like, a pride photo shoot. Yeah. Have you seen those memes where it's just like the gays being like, I'm so sad, but I wanted to present you guys the outfit I've been really working hard on this year for Pride. And it's like them in a Speedo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do that, Kyle. Oh, well, I don't. Do the listeners want that? Do they want a picture of me in a Speedo? Ooh, we'll, we'll put that up as a poll question. You know, I don't think we need to do that. I don't want my feelings. <laughs> I don't want my feelings hurt. <laughs> Um, oh, you know, body positivity. Percent. Huh? I definitely think the voting would be a hundred percent. Who would vote no to that? Well, yeah, because I'm a sexy motherfucker, but my inner saboteur may vote no. <laughs> it's like the only vote no would be me. Wait, from your account? Yeah. <laughs> like, who wants to see Kyle in a speedo? Kyle? No. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I was thinking about that. I probably should, like, I don't know, still celebrate somehow, I guess, even though this entire month is canceled. 
Well, I don't think the month, it's like the month isn't necessarily canceled. I think we are, as a society, just adjusting how we celebrate and con- commemorate things. Yeah, uh, that's true. I, re- I phrased it wrong. I guess I just mean like, in the traditional sense, we're not getting together, at least right now, for a Jill's Pride party, which I'm very depressed about. Right. Well, speak for yourself. I'm climbing through the window. I am Melissa Etheridging uh, at Jill's, and she's going to freak the fuck out. She's going to be like, ah, six feet, six feet. I'll and be, then she just, like, kicks you back down. No, she squirts be, sunscreen in my eyes. I'll be, I'll be waiting by the light of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Melissa Etheridge reference? <laughs> yes, I know. That's why I squealed. <laughs> I was like, she got it. Um, I... Um, yes, this is in quarantine. Some days are easier than others, but I know the day of pride is going to be very difficult. And obviously that sounds very first world problem, but you know, I, and I was saying that to my sister, like, you know, I, I shouldn't be complaining, but she was like, no, you know, you're allowed to be sad about things. And I I'm sad. I'm sad that it's not happening. It's, it's because, you know, I've been looking forward, we've all been looking forward to the party the day after the other party, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's not even, like, I mean, granted, I do love your parties, like, they're so much fun, but it's more in the sense of, like, even just, like, being with you guys on Pride, like, even if it was just, like, you uh, sitting stoned out of our minds on Jill's couch again, like. And me me telling a story about my childhood. Hashtag drama. (laughs) Yeah, hashtag triggered. Uh, have you, did, were you preparing for the pride party for a while before yes, quarantine? I've, I've been preparing all year. Um, I, <laughs> whenever I see sales or anything that could pertain to the pride party or, or I was, you know, I was coordinating things months ago and I, that's why I have like 12 bottles of rosé in my refrigerator and I haven't drank in months. So look at that. But <laughs> you're like, I also have not been able to store any food whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's it's yeah, it that it it's tough, especially you know. But you know, wine wine keeps for a long time, so we can always keep it for next year. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah totally. Um, and again, even if it is like on a like snowy December night when we finally celebrate Pride, I'm right. still gonna be at your door. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hell oh, hundred percent. And I feel like to I don't know, I, I go through bouts, especially in quarantine, where I'm like extremely bummed out that nothing is happening. But mm-hmm. I also like have to have faith that it's all going to kind of like shake itself out. We're going to get through this. It's just we just have to have patience. Right. And yeah. The- That's the hardest thing. Uh- of George Michael, you just gotta have faith. True. Ooh, gay icon. queer icon reference. Yes, yeah. thank you. I'm full of them. Um. <laughs> are there are there some pride moments that um, stand out where you kind of cringe? Oh my god! Oh, Jesus. every year for me. Um, <laughs> I end <I>, up <laughs> last year. <laughs> Yeah, last year was well. I was I was not medicated, and I was about like two liters of tequila in, <laughs> and I was I was ready to go for blood. <laughs> well, okay, you know the funny thing is, is that I know Kyle and I like got into like a major fight last year. I don't even remember what we were fighting about at this point. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't think it's it's like not even important <laughs> to bring it. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's like one of those things where like in the moment, it was so extra and so like real housewives of boys town yeah like i was like ready to like break a glass and be like don't you ever talk about my husband um lisa renna lisa renna gay icon um but like in the grand scheme of things yeah it was like not even anything no and that Um, confused me so bad because i remember asking you guys how did we get here (laughs) No, okay. Oh so it, listeners, it really was like a real housewife moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> listeners, I have to paint a picture for you guys. So this was like this was like about an hour into our argument. We had actually started an argument at the bar we were at and then we kept fighting all the way back to Jill's apartment and it just was the the three of us at the end of the night. And 
Kyle and I are still bickering back and forth about something stupid. I can't remember. And Jill's just like sitting there like, okay. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jill flings her bra at me. and She takes off her bra. Okay. That was the thing. I was like, I'm like, I have to defuse this fight somehow. And I would, the only way I could think of defusing the fight. And I was also getting ready for bed. Cause it was late at this point. It was like 1 a.m. Yeah, and it was. <laughs> also just kind of like getting ready to pass out so I like changed and I'm like in a sweatshirt and then I just took my bra off and I think my shirt off thinking to distract you guys not realizing that you're not going to be that distracted long by the female body (laughs) (laughs) I I mean Jill I've seen it before so like (laughs) (laughs) having a she was having a Lady Godiva moment in her bed yeah yes I definitely was but I love a Lady Godiva moment. I also had a Lady Godiva moment in the basement of Jackhammer. Yes, um, you did. I did. <laughs> Thank God my mom doesn't listen to this. But I... She will um, now. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, my, my sister listens to every episode. But I... Um, Your mom's like, wait, you also have it in the basement of Jackhammer? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, that's so crazy, Jill. Last time I was there was... Huh, nine when months you before con- you were born. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, so I, um, yes. So I was just laying in bed and they were screaming and I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the line where, where Josh goes and in the, the place of work. So I won't name it, but it was, it was like, and you said no one likes me at the theater. And I said to Kyle, did you say that to him? And Kyle goes, only twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was such a reality show moment. Like, it was, if we had, if we were on TV, it would have been the best, ep- like, people would be oh, quoting it, it. Oh, oh, because totally. it was so insane. Yeah, people would have made t-shirts all over it. Did you say that to him? Oh, my God. Only twice. Only twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, what a mean thing to say. What a mean, true thing to say. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm joking. Oh, my God. That's so mean. We can I really be, have to be, like, only be... thrice. <laughs> only... I've said it only thrice. No, honestly, like, I think... Um, You know, one, I hadn't taken my medication. Listeners, I take medication for anxiety and depression. And that morning, I showed up at Josh's, and he was still getting his makeup done. So I was sitting there on the front porch. I thought I was going to be late because I am late to everything. And I remember, Josh, do you remember? You walked up, and I go, I don't think I took my meds today. (laughs) That was, like, the first thing that he said to me. I was like, oh, shit, should we go back? And I was like, Um, no, 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 no. We have to get to the party. Well, you know, you mix no medication and tequila, you get some fun times. Well, (laughs) to be fair, Jill ordered us a shit ton of pizza for the party, and they were three hours late, so I think we were all, like, fucking hangry, too, at that point. And the pizza wasn't even correct. Like, you ordered cheese pizza, and one of them was burnt. (laughs) Just the way Jill likes it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I, it's like Jill's laughing because she's like, "Well, that's how I put in the order: it's a burnt pizza, burnt three it. hours late." <laughs> I, said that, I said that on the phone to them because I remember sitting in my hallway and we were all sitting down, and I was saying to you guys, and I was having like an epiphany because I was like, you know, I've been meeting a lot of people's groups of friends lately, and I was like, I have really hot friends. <laughs> saying that to you guys and I was like I have just really hot friends <laughs> like I was like oh my god I need to call Pizza Hut so I called Pizza Hut speaking of hot <laughs> hot ready <laughs> that's little Caesar <laughs> um, I love how you know the logos of the pizza <laughs> I'm trash by the way um no so I uh I remember <laughs> calling them and I was like I ordered this actually three hours ago, I'm like, I'm starting to get a bit concerned. And he was like, well, she hasn't left yet. And then like five minutes later, she showed up. I I remember that. (laughs) I remember. I would love, 
way. And then I, this, this guy came and he was like glancing around and I looked and I was like, are you here for the party? And he was like, yeah. And like, then just came and luckily he, he knew the people, our other friends who were at my party because it was like, what if it was just some random guy? <laughs> looking for something and then all of a sudden someone sitting on the ground tells them are you here for the party <laughs> like okay Gollum. yeah <laughs> <laughs> my precious pizza do you, i i honestly okay maybe this is selfish of me but i don't feel like i am in i'm not like pride ready like my skin isn't ready i've i feel a little bit like and hey i'm being very po- body positive I uh-huh. don't care that I'm fat. I don't care that I'm chubby. That's not it. But you ever feel like like when you don't work out and you're used to working out yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I don't feel like my chubbiness is not toned. I usually am like a toned chubby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm always chubby. It's part of the brand. It's cute. Yeah. Right. Um, but like right now I'm like, oh my God, I just feel like mashed potatoes. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I'm just like. <laughs> so, like, a week. What do you feel like? What did, what did that guy you went on a date with, Kyle? What did he say? He was like, miss you, potato. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> listeners, one time. Okay. So, I went on a date with someone. And I've talked about this on the podcast. Um, I don't remember what episode, which just means that you guys have to listen to every episode. <laughs> <laughs> to figure it out. Do it. Please do. Um, but this this date was a date that I um, was with someone who was very drunk, and they I, I got them home because they couldn't get home themselves, and they kicked in their door and broke the door. So if that like triggers anything in people's memories, um, I don't think this person listens to the podcast. If they do, hey, what's up? Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, that person, like a few months after sent me like a meme or something, um, on Instagram. And I was like, ha ha ha, so funny. And they responded with Missy potato, (laughs) potato, (laughs) part of me, I'm like kind of okay with it. Cause I'm like, yeah, I am a potato, but I'm also like, how do you know? I mean, to be How fair, though, know? like, Miss- I've never heard of anybody who doesn't like potatoes. True. Fried, mashed, totted. They're always good. Yeah. Right? Um, it was funny, though, because when I told people that, like, I told multiple different people, and there was two very different reactions. Either people were like, what the hell is wrong with that person? Or I had, like, a handful of people that were like, that is the cutest thing I've ever heard. And I was like, okay, well. Of Miss You Potato? Miss You Potato. Yeah, I had a few people that were like, that's oh. really cute. You know, you're naming mashed, baked, fried, everything. And name someone with that kind of range. Right. <laughs> I, hey, I got the range. Maybe yeah. not vocally, but potato-y. Yeah, I'll, I'm a starch. <laughs> a starch is born. A starch is born. Jill, stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If we ever had a stand that was just made, like, for French fries, it, I would want to be called a starch is born. A that starch is, amazing. is born. <laughs> and you could, like, we would just, like, have a potato, and you would just decide. Do you want it mashed? Do you want it fried? Do you want it yeah. baked? A starch is born. God damn. That is good. Jill is a marketing <laughs> wow. queen. Marketing queen. Oh my god. I'll do the illustration for it. Um oh wow. my god. okay. We could talk about Are this we... offline. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a little worried that you know one of our seven listeners are going to like take this idea <laughs> and trademark it. <laughs> They're gonna trademark it. And it's gonna be a listener that's in Idaho. So they have a a, a, a bigger range of potatoes available to them. Yeah. Have you met anybody from Idaho? Uh no, I haven't. Me neither. No. I don't even think there's anyone that lives there. Yeah, does anyone? <laughs> <laughs> just potatoes. <laughs> it's just potatoes. I, I don't know anyone who does lives anyone in Idaho. Does live in Idaho? Yes or no? Yeah, we're going to post that on Instagram. Question. Does anyone live in Idaho? Yes or no? 
<laughs> because I honestly, I've never met someone from Idaho. I just know people go in, they harvest. Is that what you say? They harvest the potatoes. Yeah. I and then just... they send it out to grocery stores. So I don't know. This basically harkens back to the year that you guys were so high that I was telling a story. We, we, yeah. we all reacted differently to the gummy. I decided that I was going to tell stories. No, actually, Kyle, what you did was when we went to the bar, you... Oh, the fan. Threw, you threw a fan, like, at someone's... Or, no, like, you start flapping the fan at someone's face, and they're like, exactly. you're triggering my friend. <laughs> That's also because we were listening to Paper Planes, and... Yes. One second, let me... Hang on. So this we is were... also a very Leo moment where they're reenacting the entire thing word for word. Okay. First of all... <laughs> Speaking of that, somebody, a, a couple people have mentioned, they were like, when you code a movie, like you get so into it, you do all the voices. And I was thinking, I was like, no one else does that. Are me and my friends just like dramatic as fuck? <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of fire sign energy. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, doesn't everyone do that? Like I, if I'm reenacting something, I'm reenacting it. So anyway, speaking of reenacting, uh, we were in the bar and there was a, a paper planes by MIA came on and me and Kyle both had a fan and we were like thwarping the fan to the beat. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, that scared me. <laughs> I actually knew she was going to do that. I was like, okay, I have to take my earbuds out. And I took them out. Cause I was like, she's going to do it. <laughs> Kyle's She's nipples gonna... are hard. <laughs> I just I just checked, and you know what? They are. <laughs> between between the talk of potatoes and her thwapping a fan, my nips are hard. Nips out for Jesus this pride. Hello. So, listeners, we actually have yet another second segment for you guys that we're introducing tonight, and it's called Chill with Jill. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for the introduction. Yes. Um, I like to actually think that I'm a person who needs no introduction, but I will thank you for it. <laughs> uh, Next time, yeah. we won't say a goddamn thing, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm we're going to lead in by saying uh, starch is born, and then you just pick it up from there. <laughs> I was going to say, watch Kyle and I like just like randomly see that an episode was uploaded like on the Fear the Crew website. It's just chill. <laughs> I would live. I, it's just feel it's like, just, hey, it's listeners. Just me, like, it's just me talking throughout the day and then sometimes singing and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes just quoting random television shows to myself. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, thank you so. so much for this segment, Chill with Jill. I'm really excited about this because this is something I want to eventually take to the camera, but your girl's got a face for radio. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm not joking, but... Stop coming for my gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all need our own brand. So, I was going to say, luckily with face masks, though, like half of our faces are like covered anyway. So like, you could do this. Exactly. Oh, true. Oh my God. Sorry, randomly, my Uber driver who was driving me home from work today, he was even saying too, he's just like, you know, the great thing about this is that if you're ugly, I mean, this is like a grand opportunity for you to be out in public right now with the mask. Um, I'm like, hello, oh. I'm thriving right now. <laughs> It's, it's we've been training for this right so um but i'm really excited to be doing to chill with jill and for since it's uh, our pride episode and um i wanted to kind of do a theme of that and i want to kind of give we've been kind of talking up the pride party throughout the episode and i kind of want to give some tips and tricks on not only to have a great pride party but to have a great party in general yes so, Please, go ahead. Okay, well, first, I want to start off with a very special drink recipe. I know, um, dare I say, uh, what did you guys used to call it? Uh, thirst trap? Yes. So, this is kind of a fun thirst trap for some of your parties. And so what I've noticed in one of my biggest tips of a party, you know, these are in no particular order. They're all important in my eyes because honestly, I like to think that one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons that I was put on this earth was to throw a party. It's just something that I love doing and I take very seriously and it just brings me such joy. So with that said, <laughs> um, <laughs> 
wanted to kind of give a recipe of a thirst trap and one of and one of the the biggest things when you're throwing parties every year, especially if you're doing an annual party, kind of analyze, this is like the business side of me, kind of analyze what the, you know, the, the roses and the thorns were of the party and they don't always have to be bad, but just kind of like how you can improve on it or even just kind of look at what people are enjoying and what didn't go over as well. So, you know, 2017, 2018, I was planning events. So I was able to get a lot of free booze through that and free alcohol and beer. And I had a ton of beer. And I noticed that a lot of people weren't drinking the beer. You know, they'd, they'd open the bottle, take a couple sips and then throw it out, or they just weren't touching the beer. But my wine and my vodka and my clear liquor was going really fast. So I realized, okay, you know, it's summertime, it's pride. Everyone's trying to keep it cute. So they, don't want to, you know, bloat on beer, especially because it's really hot and things like that. So I realized, okay, we're just going to stick to the rosé, the vodka, the tequila, the white wine, kind of lighter drinks. And that is what I'm going to present to you today. So um, I really wanted to kind of put together a kind of Kettle One Botanicals Grapefruit and Rose Sangria. Ooh. And, yes. So what you want, um, the Kettle One Botanicals are great because they're almost kind of like a diet vodka. They're very light in calories, but you are going to get drunk. So, they, I mean, they, yes. they, they're all called. So with your sangria, what you want to do, um, you basically, you want about an ounce and a half of the Kettle One Botanicals Grapefruit and Rose. And then you want about three ounces of white wine. I like things on the drier side. So I would suggest like a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc for my taste bud and my palate. However, if you like Chardonnay or anything like that, kind of just your favorite white wine. And then you want to do three ounces fresh grapefruit juice and make sure it's fresh. If you could have, honestly, the the grapefruits and squeeze it yourself that would be awesome three ounces is not a lot I mean that's like half of a grapefruit or maybe even a quarter of one so it's not like you're gonna be you know working up a sweat squeezing these grapefruits so you you want to measure that out and maybe mm -hmm. like ounce or so of triple sec maybe even like a half ounce I don't like things that sweet so do all that and then maybe like some fresh mint or basil for garnish Put all of that chill with some ice and put it in a glass and you have just an amazing, refreshing vodka sangria that you're definitely going to feel after a couple of glasses. And I love the idea of having a bunch of drinks at your party, but also having a unique signature drink that you could change every year. And that's kind of like the, the timestamp on your party. And that's what makes it extra special because another great tip is just kind of having those details that send your party over the top, just those extra special touches that separates you from so many other people. And you don't have to be that creative to think of stuff. I mean, it, and, but people are still going to be so impressed with anything because a lot of people don't go that extra mile. I'm I was going to say like, I was gonna say I definitely feel like as long as you like show that you're like at least trying to be creative, I feel like people appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Totally, and that that separates your party from you know everyone else's. And another great tip would be to kind of use your resources. So, and that's another way that you could be a budget queen. You don't have to break the bank with this. So if you kind of use your resources and kind of see how you could be resourceful and save some money, I mean, I had all these plans for this year and as single tier falls, um, <laughs> yeah, um, my, my boss is, as I mentioned before, really great at decorating cookies and they look professional, like they cost a ton of money and I was going to pay her whatever she would take because she would never charge me to decorate a bunch of pride cookies for us. And like, could you Aww. imagine 
going in to a, you know, just an after pride party and that's there, people are going to be so impressed. It costs you nothing. And it's just, everyone's going to be Instagramming that and your party is going to be the talk of Boys Town. That's cute. I didn't know I you were going to do that. I know. I, it's very well, secrets out. Yeah, secrets out. So I'm gonna have to think of some other things for when the party actually happens. But I did you actually eat all of them like during quarantine? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I didn't have her make. I was gonna have her make them like the weekend of Pride. Oh. <laughs> like they would be. Stacked. Jill was going to give us moldy cookies. Yes. And it was going to be the talk of Boys Town. Exactly. Um, like at least has- I did something different. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I have moldy cookies. <laughs> It just reminds me how on To Catch a Predator, they always have cookies out for the predator. And sometimes, or cookies or brownies. And sometimes when they're in the house for days, they'll forget that they had, they left the brownies out for, like, the day. And they'll tell the, they'll tell the predator, like, have a brownie. And it's, like, hard as a rock. <laughs> Jill, if you're saying that usually this happens on To Catch a Predator, what were you hoping to catch at your pride party this year? <laughs> coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> the true predator of 2020 no, side effect is weight loss so that's another thing you don't have to break the bank i plan for this party especially if you're having an annual party i like to you know your the, your biggest competitor is yourself so i like to outdo myself every year and just make it better and better and have more people come over every year and just everything so i like to look for deals throughout the year, say if there's a deal on Prosecco or if there's a deal on Rosé, Whole Foods always has great deals on Rosé and different wines. Pay attention to that and collect it throughout the year. And if you wait till the month of where it's summer and all the wine is not going on sale because everyone's gonna buy it anyway, that's when you're gonna pay so much. So if you're buying rosé in the dead of winter when no one's buying it, you're gonna get some great deals. So so kind of stock up throughout the year if you know you're having an annual party. And I mean, I like to provide all, I mean, people could have BYOB parties, but for me, I like to provide all of the beverages. Um, that's just kind of, and I, people are so kind, you know, we have great friends who bring stuff, but then I also feel like, I'm so selective with what I drink that that stuff just stays in my cabinet until next Pride party and (laughs) someone drinks it. So I like to just kind of provide everything. So, but you don't have to break the bank with that. Be resourceful, plan ahead, look for deals. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, And that kind of rolls into, sorry, your girl has a lot of tips. She's got a lot to say. (laughs) Um, I mean, hey, these are perfect parties. So go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. Um, so another would be food wise. You want to be all inclusive or you want to be inclusive with your food. You know, we have friends who are vegetarians. Josh, you have a peanut allergy. I don't mm-hmm. want anything in the apartment that is meat. And, you know, it's summer. No one in the, it's June. No one really wants to eat meat. So so you'll notice. I mean, we talked about Pizza Hut messed it up. That's why I'm ordering. <laughs> I'm ordering. God damn pizza. <laughs> oh my god. I love that. I, this is a call out podcast now. We are calling you out. Pizza I, Hut is canceled. Seriously. Pizza Hut is canceled. Seriously though, because I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm going with Paninos from now on. And I um because they're so close, whatever. And um <laughs> so you sponsorship. Wanna, oh, I if I'm not sponsored by Paninos, I've been going there for nine years. Um anyway. No. Really quickly, do you remember when we went into Panino's and Joe was just, like, talking to the new guy at the counter? She's like, oh, I don't know you. <laughs> she was like, I don't recognize you. You must be new here. I've been there, coming here for eight years. Okay, there was one. That was, like, the year before or whatever. There was one pride fest. This kid who worked at Panino's was so cute. But he's probably maybe, like, four or five years younger than me. But he was such a cutie. And he maybe worked there for, like, a summer. And there was one Pride Fest where I flirted with him hardcore and we were vibing. And then I sobered up and realized I was like, I cannot go to Panino's until that kid goes back to college. Oh my God. I, you're like, until that kid turns 21. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I really you want said to not to eat. 
So well, you said no meat during the summer, but you were talking to him like he was some grade A beef, honey. <laughs> <laughs> he was lean meat. Um, You're so, well, even lean meat can make pepperoni. A little I, sausage? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so he but he was very very cute um anyway you want to you know we have a lot of friends who are vegetarian so i kind of stick to strictly cheese pizza because you never want to order a mixture of you know meat pizzas and cheese pizzas and then someone ends up eating all the cheese pizza i'm a vegetarian doesn't get any, any. so mm-hmm. you know I, I just like to stick everything with cheese stuff that everyone likes my stat my snacks i like to keep where everyone can eat. That's also very important. I like to have a very wide array of snacks because you truly never know what's going to happen when that pizza is getting delivered and you live in the heart of Boy Town on Pride, aka three hours waiting for the Pizza Hut pizzas. Thank <laughs> God I had a ton of snacks, a ton of snacks that people could fill up on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Poor pizza is getting dragged through the mud. <laughs> yeah, at the, at the Pizza Hut on Clark Street, like goes out of business after. <laughs> Jill's legacy. <laughs> She's like, I took down that villainous company. Oh no, I I'm not. But I'm saying they they screwed up that day. Yeah. <laughs> I um, I think definitely have a wide array of snacks so that people aren't hangry. And so that, you know, you just have to expect the unexpected. I honestly think it's, I had a few Jack's pizzas too in the freezer where it was like, okay, I don't really want to heat up the oven on a late June afternoon, but if I have to, I'll cook the pizzas, whatever, and we'll all be fine. But I kind of have, you want to expect the unexpected. And like I said, learn from your mistakes. My first pride party, I mean, I'm not a girl, I don't, I smoke alone, but I never drink alone in my apartment so I didn't realize that I didn't have a beer bottle opener and someone went to grab a beer and was like hey Jill do you have a bottle opener and like a chill went through my spine thank god <laughs> and someone had one. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> serious. I take this very seriously so then and I was like, oh my you're god. like I'm gonna be canceled <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever gonna come back to my studio apartment <laughs> I, um, I learned from your mistakes. So that was a th- something. Thank God someone had a keychain that had a bottle opener on it or else I'd be screwed. But you know what I did next year? Like a goddamn phoenix from the ashes. The party favors were rainbow bottle opener keychains. That's right. That so, was really cute, actually. No, uh, thank you. So, you know, you have to just read <laughs> In my head, I was like, did I not get one? <laughs> They were all on the table, Kyle. <laughs> I don't know if I got one. <laughs> you were too busy talking. I think I was. <laughs> but, but, and I had them last year, too, because not because I bought, like, a whole bulk thing off Amazon. I think it was, like, 50 pieces. So I still have a ton of them. They'll be out every single year until everyone takes them. And remember when I had koozies as a party favor? I do have, I do have that. I was like, I, I have, have two of those yeah. still. Yeah. That was clever. And maybe if I get a promotion, I'll brand them next year. <gasps> Actually, um, I know a few companies that can do, like, for fairly a good price if you want a logo or something on it. Oh, okay. That's awesome to know because that's, then I'll do it. Because, like I said, I always want to outdo myself. And once I have a bigger apartment, Gosh, now these are not these aren't just tips anymore. These are just ideas that are floating through my head. I wanted to get a butler in the buff. I remember Ooh, that. Ooh, I do yeah. remember that. So you know what? There's just so many things. Be creative. I mean, like I'm a pretty creative person, but also tap your resources. Luckily, I'm also friends with you know you guys and a ton of other creative people. And that's how you get your juices flowing. And you know, you you just create Throw the party of the month. No, the party of the year. <laughs> oh, my God. An Eric Carter reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
my god, Joe, I don't know why, but I immediately was just, like, taken back to, like, 2000. I was just like, oh. <laughs> party realness. Listeners, listeners, if anybody who is listening, basically Jill has been trying to remodel Aaron's party since 2000. <laughs> Category is Aaron, Aaron's party realness. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I beat Shaq. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. oh, it's also, speaking of inclusiv- inclusivity, is it's a pride party. So you want to go beyond the rainbows. You want to showcase transsexual, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, anything that you can give representation to in your decor or in your toast. You want to you wanna make sure that, at, just like how your food everyone can enjoy it. You want to make sure that everyone is, is represented. And I think that that's something that I take really seriously in my decor because it's a pride party. Everyone should feel proud of who they are. And I think that goes beyond the rainbow. Yes, I and, agree. Um, so that's something I take very seriously, but that goes to just your crew. I'm very welcoming. I tell, and you know, I have the smallest apartment ever, but whenever someone tells me they're bringing someone, I'm like, okay, we'll make it work. If we have to spill out into the hallway, if we have to, you know, it's totally fine and everyone is welcome and make sure your job as the host, like I said, don't eat a very strong edible because you're... <laughs> learned yes because you're on the clock I like to make sure that you know it's it's June it's hot I have a ton of water everyone's hydrated everyone's okay if there's drama going on I want to make sure that even if you want to make sure that that bra is ready to come off yes and you want to distract and I'm gonna diffuse the stitch but I think I think if you're gonna be a host you have to be prepared to be showing some body parts oh oh that's true the same parts and yeah, the same parts yeah because what you see isn't always the truth <laughs> I what um yeah I just think like always check on your guests and you know just if I, I found I thought last year was the best party yet and I think it was because there were so many newcomers and if you radiate positive energy with your gatherings you're gonna have great people who come to it and there's nothing better for me as a host than having two people who walked in as strangers and left as friends. True. Aww, and that happened. Cute. That happened last year. That happened a couple times last year. Yeah. So, one of them, the Pizza Hut lady. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Jill, you said everyone is welcome at your party except for Pizza Hut. <laughs> I told her when she came, I'm like, if you want to hang out. And she's like, no, I can't. Um, but you know, I just, I, I'm welcoming to everyone, and just, yeah, if, if any of the listeners want to come, come by. I was gonna say, the one thing that I really do like about your party is the fact that it doesn't feel like there are segregated groups at your party, like, we're literally all together, like, hanging out and celebrating Pride, which always feels great, so. Right. Yeah, Kudos I like that, too. Thank you. And I feel I'm lucky because it is a small space, so no one really has a choice. But no matter how... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no one has a choice. Y'all got to be friends. Right. But I but I feel like when you kind of have that mom vibe, I think of my party guests as my children. And I want them all getting along. Even if there is drama, I want it still in a fun way or we're getting over it or whatever. And, you know, everyone's just having fun. No matter how big the space gets over the years, I still want to have that same vibe where there aren't segregated groups. I'm picturing if you ever were in a larger space for your party, Jill, you still locking everyone in your bedroom (laughs) and being like, the party's in here. We're not leaving. Leave or or leave and die. (laughs) Leave. And you know what? You'll be out on the curb right with the Pizza Hut girl. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I will have this You'll... entire neighborhood against you. <laughs> oh, just you wait. Just you wait, Pizza Hut. I was yeah. gonna say, you know what? The funny thing is, is that after all this, watch Jill's just like, you know what? I'm retiring the Pride Party. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> no, I it. It's, it's the thing that I live for. But low-key, if 
Pizza Hut is listening, I am open to some retribution. And if you want to sponsor next year, I'm <laughs> we, we can talk. We can talk. I think I think we should also extend the offer for your pride party to friend of the pod, Nikki Blonsky. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Well, Have her come on. Yes, if I, because I was thinking, I'm like, God, I would love to have some entertainment eventually. And could you imagine if Deep Friend of the Pod, Nikki Blonsky came and sang some songs for us? I would be a fucking legend. (laughs) It'd be amazing. I was like, you already are, but yes, I agree. (laughs) I would like it if she went to, she accidentally went to the wrong apartment. (laughs) And we could hear, like, her singing Hairspray. Or she, or the she walls, turn, and we're like, <laughs> or she turns up as the butler in Buff. <laughs> um, you can't stop the beat. Um, do you think people like we're getting stronger. Do you think people will actually start fearing the queer? Uh, they should because if you, <laughs> I think that if if you piss off one gay person, that gay person will post it on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and then you'll have like an entire <laughs> group of gay people be like. We're not going to give you a makeover. <gasps> yeah. Like, like, don't piss off this potato queen. <laughs> don't piss, don't piss me off. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> potato queen. I used to be a mayo queen, and now I think I'm a potato queen. I think that's an upgrade. I was like, you're upgrade. Is it an upgrade? Yeah, Am I upgrade? Oh my god. Because mayo is not for mayo. everybody. Right. Ooh, mayo isn't for everybody, but you know what it is. Potatoes. Potato, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. All right. Well, thank you, Jill, for coming yeah, on the podcast you. again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, I definitely had a lot to say, especially with party planning, but I hope that some of these tips resonated for any of my, you know, my my party children out there, my club kids, because now I'm, I'm kind of turning into the club mother. So... Any of and they call me mother. And yeah. they call me Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of synonymous. Even, yes, I only have I only have a few good years left of being a club kid, and um, I'm losing a summer, so that's fun. But uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. James St. James is at least 80. So, <laughs> but that's true. true. He was legitimately grandfathered in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the shade of it all. Should I do? do? sorry headphones users um but yes thank you uh i'm i'm running on again as i'm thanking you for letting me run on so thank you that's totally fine um you tolerate me you really tolerate me (laughs) oh my god i kind of love that that could be a catchphrase jill (laughs) you tolerate me you really tolerate me yes Oh, I love that. Oh, you're getting an award. I like that. <laughs> I yeah. like that. I can't believe it's been 50 episodes. I know. It's crazy. Imagine, like, remember how our very first episode was filled with, like, little sound effects and it was only, like, 20 minutes long? <laughs> well, that's that's because I edited it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was very into, like, sound effects and cutaways. Um, he wanted but, the you know. I wanted the drama, but we all played to our strengths. Yeah. And um, I am not an editing queen. That's not my that's not my thing. I like the sound effects, but I do have to say, you know, especially it being a pride pride episode, how proud I am of you guys. Like that, I remember uh, just <laughs> fear the queer. You know, uh, you know, reading your script, going to then doing the podcast, and you guys have done it. 50 episodes and it's it's just it's really amazing it's a very big milestone so you guys should be proud of yourself. thank you thank, thank you, you. I, and, then and she thank you for us. always being well it, well thank you for always being supportive um yeah. but also who gave you the scripts <laughs> <laughs> how did you how did you get the the scripts of fear the queer those were not released to the public no i'm just kidding we definitely had jill <laughs> proofread them carrier <laughs> pigeon i was like jill was the only one willing to read them Get, leave her alone <laughs> and she was the first one to rate us on apple podcast with one star <laughs> uh, i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> oh, no, i think you, you knew. knew exactly i think you yeah knew exactly. i knew exactly. you're like 
she said she gave us a glowing review she said i you know great podcast fear the queer yes everyone listened to it and then gave us one star and you know what um it, this should be a warning to pizza hut you do not mess with joe conkle she will give you one star on no. yelp Stop afraid of it no i am not that person i swear Jill, we're going to start calling you Karen. Um, oh my God. Can oh I my God. God. That is an insult. That is an Sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. I understand that I shouldn't be saying such a racial slur on this podcast. I'm going to have to bleep that, so thanks. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Kyle. You're, you're going so to have to... Oh, my God. I remember the first time that we posted, and I was like, oh, my God, we posted an episode. And then how excited I got when we got the little explicit thing yeah. next to our name and yeah. I was like oh we are not for children it makes us feel edgier it makes us feel really edgy and what's funny too because you should fear you should fear the queer what's funny too is sometimes we would get the explicit and it wouldn't even be like we wouldn't we there's no cursing there's mm. no sex talk there's nothing but I think that <laughs> I think that like Apple podcast is like um they said fear the queer and that is a slur <laughs> right <laughs> like they're just the like oh slur my is in the like name a, this is an alt-right group that's talking about how much they hate queers right we should start another podcast called karen's unite oh my god <laughs> karen for karen karen for Car- karen for president i love karen for karen that's cute oh, karen for Joel, you are just such a marketing queen oh my god karen karen seeking karen's Desperately seeking Karens. <laughs> Desperately oh, seeking good. Karens. Oh my God, I love it. Oh so my God. We're, so uh, this is the last Fear the Queer episode we have. We now are going to be Karen oh seeking Karen. <laughs> yeah, Desperately seeking Karen. It's been a really great run, but if this is turning into Desperately seeking Karen. <laughs> Suddenly <laughs> Karen. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Oh my God, um, that could be really funny. We just open with, I'd like to speak to a manager. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we get right. Kate Gosselin to do a cameo I was literally just thinking of her <laughs> I bet she's gonna make a comeback you know we're always oh. ahead of the curve oh you know Kate Gosselin is like peak Karen oh, oh yeah. I thought you were going to say you know Kate Gosselin is listening to this podcast <laughs> what if she was the, the ultimate twist of the century <laughs> I would be like how come she hasn't promoted us how rude yeah. Kate, Kate Gosselin, come on. Kate Gosselin, deep friend of the pod. Deep, deep friend. Well, yeah. we're going to we're gonna conjure that into existence. So, Kate Gosselin, be prepared. <laughs> Next Pride Party, Kate Gosselin and Nikki Blonsky perform. Oh, my God. <laughs> in an off, off, off uh, Broadway Street in Chicago version of uh, Nikki and Kate plus eight. <laughs> Who are the eight? Uh, the other people invited to the party. <laughs> I was gonna say it's us sitting in the audience. <laughs> it's it's the us. It's seven. It, it's it's seven. It, no, it's seven people plus the Pizza Hut girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder where she's at now. Probably listening and just regretting everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, Pizza Hut girl, if you would like to come on Pizza Hut, if you would like to respond to us, yeah, please. please. We would love to have you on the podcast. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't hold anything against your uh rebu- rebuff sauce or your burnt cheese. Oh my god. Um yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not to say that right. I'm an upper crust. All right, uh, I'm type gonna cut you, I'm I'm gonna cut you off right there, Night and Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jill, uh list off your social media where we could follow you at. Oh, thank you. Um, you can follow me at JMK Skincare on Instagram. And if you want to see the stu- stupid Snapchat stories I post, it's JMK all the way, one word on Snapchat. Yes. And she is a Snapchat queen. Thank you. Yes. I, but it, Josh, you need to re-add me on Snapchat because I don't. I didn't know you were back on. To be fair, I'm like hardly on it, but yes, I will. I need to make sure because I need to be following the social media queen. <laughs> oh God, with my 45 followers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this <laughs> yeah. this is a fun 50th episode. 
I really appreciate that we came together and still talked about Pride even in quarantine. Of course. Um, so, listeners, um, just make sure to subscribe to us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, for the 50th episode celebration, we're going to be posting a few fun of our favorite moments in our Instagram stories. Uh, just going back over the past three years that we've done this now. No, two years. Yeah. It's been two years. Yeah, we started yeah. in September of 2018, I believe, wasn't it? Oh, that is crazy. I know. Ugh. We are we are wild girls. Yeah. Um, and if you want right. to follow us on Instagram, we are at the Pizza Hut. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> make sure to hit that follow button and yes. uh, like and subscribe. Exactly. Or you could follow us at Fear the Queer Podcast as well. That too. all right. That too. Yes. And as always, I'm Josh. And I'm Kyle. And I'm Jill. And, and we're, we're Fear the Queer. Fear the Queer. Bye. 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 <laughs> Girl, you do have the range. <laughs> Jill has the range, ladies and gentlemen. She has the range. I was Annie. So that was the last episode. Thank you for... Uh, tuning in and uh enjoying that with us thank you yeah. i was gonna say um, or maybe you didn't enjoy it i don't know if you enjoyed it maybe you hated it right they in which case the past two hours just for us to sit here at the very end and be like we hope you liked it <laughs> to be fair we're not a presidential debate so as long as it uh you can endure us for two hours if you sat through that hot mess right exactly topical yes yeah, so i'm very happy that you guys are able to um listen to the podcast and we finally were able to release it uh it was always great to have friend of the podcast jill on um she may be back i was gonna say eventually we're gonna have her back on mm -hmm. a conference you know who knows um but yeah i hope you enjoy also we have a little bit of announcement for you guys um, yes we are all about the announcements this episode yes um first of all go out and vote that's the first announcement that's not really an announcement that's more of a command go out and vote do it. Second of all. <laughs> do it. Do it. Second of all. Uh, Kyle, uh, tell the viewers of what you're going to be doing. So for the next couple of weeks, I am going to be going to Michigan. I had a COVID test. I'm good to go. I haven't seen my family and friends. Unlike Donald but, Trump, I mean, I'm, see, I'm seeing you. Yes. So um, I'm going to go and enjoy that time. And uh, we will just have like a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah. It is spooky season. So, um, you know, speak the scariest thing right now is uh, Donald Trump. So focus on the election or don't listen to this podcast and uh, enjoy the show. Right. But um, I am actually getting ready to go to Michigan. So um, it was nice talking to you, Josh, and I will see you later. Bye. Wait, you can't wait. We haven't finished your, Kyle, Kyle. I forgot my phone. Oh. Ow. Uh, well, I, uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I'm Josh. And this is Fear the Queer. Bye.